one of the most challenging parts of our faith is understanding how how much we can give and how we give and how that has an impact on uh, on our faith and who we are. We're given through our vows of membership in Methodist Church these big categories of ways that we uh, that we give back to God through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, our witness. And these are all different ways that we can give. It's not just about giving our money. That is appreciated, and it takes money to keep the church up and running, but it also takes these gifts in these other areas too. The ways that we can give that live out our faith, not because we are commanded to give, but because it is an expression of who we are as God's children. And so I invite you as, uh, as we come into this time today to give up your gifts to God. To give of your monetary gifts, you can send those into the church. You can give online. You can, uh, if you can figure it out, you can give them by smoke signal if you wanted. But also the other gifts that you have to offer, because we each have gifts in differing major in differing places that can be used to serve God, to serve our church, to serve our community that we are part of, and to serve others who are around us. So I invite you to find those ways that you can give. As we make these gifts, let us do so through words of prayer. God of grace and compassion, as we offer our tithes and offerings this morning, we remember the lessons in your providing the Israelites with manna in the wilderness. First lesson, you took care of their needs. Second lesson, you gave enough to meet the needs of the day and instructed them to look out for the weak and needy. Finally, you made, that clear, you made clear that accumulating more than needed would not end well. Help us to learn these lessons in what you have given to us by your goodness. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Exodus in chapter 32, it's verses 1 to 14. And this is going to be a, somewhat of a familiar story as so much of this, as, of, excuse me, as so much of this is through this part of Exodus. But this is the story of the golden calf. So hear these words this morning. The people saw that Moses was taking a long time to come down from the mountain. They gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come on, make us gods who can lead us. As for this man, Moses, who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't have a clue what has happened to him. Aaron said to them, All right, take out the gold rings from the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took out the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He collected them and tied them up in a cloth, and he made a metal image of a bull calf. And the people declared, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf. Then Aaron announced, Tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord. They got up early the next day and offered up entirely burned offerings and brought well-being sacrifices. The people sat down to eat and drink and then got up to celebrate. The Lord spoke to Moses, Hurry up and go down. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt are ruining everything. They've already abandoned the path that I commanded. They have made a metal bull calf for themselves. They've bowed down to it and are offering sacrifices to it and declared, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I've been watching these people and I've seen how stubborn they are. Now leave me alone. Let my fury burn and devour them. Then I'll make a great nation out of you. But Moses pleaded with the Lord his God, Lord, why does your fury burn against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and amazing force? Why should the Egyptians say he had an evil plan to take the people out and kill them in the mountains and so wipe them off the earth? Calm down your fierce anger. Change your mind about doing terrible things to your own people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, whom you yourself promised. I'll make your descendants as many as the stars in the sky, and I've promised to give your descendants this whole land to possess for all time. Then the Lord changed his mind about the terrible things he said he would do to his people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now will you join in singing our next song? 